Hello painting peeps and welcome. It's Kathleen from Cos Creations. Welcome to the No Bra Zone number four guys. I'm glad you're here. We're talking varnish today. We're talking varnish today because I get um, a lot of emails, a lot of comments about how I finish my work. What varnish do I use? How do I apply it? So on and so forth. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give you all a little tutorial. I actually did one, no, about two years ago. It's way back. I don't know that you all know how to go in to my YouTube channel and press videos and you can scroll through them and you'll see all kinds of fun things that were done a few years back. But um, I figured, what the heck, we're going to do it again. So let's talk varnish. This painting is done. This painting has been varnished. Now, what do I do? Well, the first thing I do is I use my golden isolation coat. What's an isolation coat? Well, the best thing to do is go to golden website, golden.com, and read all about it. But I'll tell you why I use it. And it's the first thing that goes down on my dry canvas. How long do I let my canvas dry for? Sometimes a couple of weeks, sometimes longer. It depends on the humidity. It depends on how quickly I get to it. But I almost always wait about two weeks before I uh, put my isolation coat down and then my varnish. Um, some people do it after one week. It all depends on the drying conditions, how thick the paint is. This is a swipe. Um, there's not a lot of paint on this canvas. It's not like a uh, ring pour where your paint is much thicker and more paint is left on the canvas. So. I wait at least two weeks. Isolation coat, I use it for two reasons. First reason is it protects my painting, especially a, a painting that I love. You can put your isolation coat down and I learned the hard way. Um, did a couple of varnishing, um, put some varnish on a couple of my paintings. And at the time I was working out of our garage and it got very cold that night and um, my varnish just did weird, weird things. But because I had the isolation coat down, I was able to remove the varnish. How do you remove varnish? Google it. It's not an easy task. You use mineral spirits, soak, soak a cloth in mineral spirits, lay the cloth down on top of the canvas, and then I put a black trash bag down on top of that and put it in the sunlight so it warms it up. And then you pull the trash bag off and then you wipe and wipe and wipe and then you do it again and again and again until the, until the uh, varnish that went bad goes away. So it's no fun. The second reason why I use this is it puts down the most beautiful baby but soft finish on my painting and makes my varnish um, very easy to apply. Don't freak out when you put it down. You put it down very, very lightly. I put it down with an inexpensive varnishing brush. Um, you put it down and it will look a little milky. Just cover it up when you're done. Walk away from it for, um, you know, four or five hours. And when you come back, it will be clear. It has a shiny um, finish to it. So isolation coat goes down first. This got an isolation coat and then it got a layer of Liquitex gloss varnish 24 hours later. I wait 24 hours between each coat of varnish, but this did not end with gloss varnish. I put a layer of gloss varnish down. I walked away from it for 24 hours, and then I came in and I put a layer of satin varnish down. Why? Because I'm not much of a shiny girl. I like a more matted finish on my paints. I think that high gloss in some cases can take your eye away from the composition. Some of my art looks fantastic with a gloss finish, but I'm not a shiny girl. I don't like the way the light catches it and takes my eye away from things. So it's important to know if you're using a satin varnish, 
satin varnish has a matting agent in it. So I put down the gloss varnish first, which is very shiny, and I'll show you an example of that. And then I end with the satin varnish. The combination of the two, in my opinion, leaves a wonderful, wonderful finish. It's got a sheen to it, but it's not an in-your-face kind of shine. So once again, this painting got its isolation coat. 24 hours later, it got its gloss varnish. 24 hours after that, it got its satin varnish. Now, can you put two layers of satin varnish down and not put down a gloss varnish? You certainly can, but each layer of that satin varnish is going to mat your painting just a little bit more. So try it, you might like it, like it. Liquitex gloss varnish, then Liquitex satin varnish for a baby butt finish. <laughs> it's this girl's jam. Let me get this out of the way and I'll show you a couple of other examples. This is gloss varnish. When this painting was dry, I put down my isolation coat. I waited 24 hours, then I came in with my gloss varnish. Actually, I used high gloss varnish. I don't have a bottle to show you. Liquitex has a high gloss varnish, a gloss varnish, a satin varnish, and a matte varnish. So isolation coat went down first, then a high gloss varnish. 24 hours later, I put down a gloss varnish 24 lit hours after that, I put another coat of gloss varnish. It gives it almost a resin effect. Do you have to put down three coats of varnish? You do not. Most people use one. It depends on the finish you're looking for. How did I learn all this? I played with it. I played with different small canvases. One I did a matte varnish on, one I did a satin varnish on, one I did a gloss varnish, then a matte varnish. And I just played to find the finish that works best for me. So this is three coats of a high gloss varnish. Do you see how it catches all the different reflections in it, including me? Hi, guys. <laughs> Some art to me looks very nice with a high gloss or a resin finish. Generally, I like a satin finish. Let me put this aside and I'll show you another example. This is resin. Resin is nice on so many things. If you like a really nice glass finish, do resin. How did I learn to resin? I watched a video that the Massey Boys, um, Massey Art Studios did that showed me how to do resin. Resin is not scary at all. The hardest part about resin is any little dust and debris that's flying through the air. Once you're done with your coat of resin, you get in with your, um, your uh, tweezers and um, I use a very, very bright flashlight and I shine it all over to look for any tiny li little goobers or air bubbles. But a resin finish on some work is absolutely stunning. But once again, see how it catches all that light? That suits some people. I prefer a satin varnish. So I've got a little... Um, painting here somewhere. Here it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and get it ready and I'm going to show you how I varnish this. Now, this has already gotten an isolation coat. You can see it has a bit of a sheen to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to top it with a um, gloss varnish and then after that dries, I'll study it and decide if I want to go glossy with another coat of gloss varnish or if I want to use my fan, uh, satin varnish. So I hope I'm not making your head spin, guys. It's very, very easy and if you have any questions whatsoever, whatsoever put it in the description box or you can email me to causecreationsart at gmail.com. Let me get ready for you.
This is a little swipe bloom that I did about two weeks ago, and um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, varnish it. We've already got our isolation coat down, but before I go on, I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of different things. What brush do I use? I get these brushes at um, Jerry's Artorama. This is a two inch brush. They also make them smaller and bigger. bigger. It's Creative Marks and it's a two inch varnishing brush. It's a disposable varnishing brush. I invested in like a $30 varnishing brush a while back. And unless you're super good about cleaning them, it's not worth the investment. I use these once or twice and then I throw them away and just grab a new one. Um, how do I wash them? I wash them with, um, I rinse them out first and then I wash them with a mixture of Dawn soap, vinegar, and water. But once again, I use them twice and I throw them away. See how thin it is? See how soft it is? It moves ever so gingerly across my varnish. This is my favorite varnishing brush to use. Don't use, or I don't use, a thick brush. What happens is when you have a really thick brush and you put it down into your varnish, it picks a lot of that varnish up. We don't want that to happen. We want the varnish to stay on our canvas. So no thick brush, thin brush. At least that's how I like it. Sponge brushes, I don't use them. A lot of people do, and that's okay. I find that these produce a good amount of air bubbles, and air bubbles are no fun in your painting. You gotta make sure you, you um, uh, torch your painting after your isolation, not after your isolation coat, after your first coat of varnish, after your second coat of varnish. Air bubbles are just like goobers in your paint. You do not want them. These produce a lot of air bubbles for me, so I don't use a sponge brush. All right, our isolation coat is down on this guy. It was done a couple of days ago. If you paint with push pins, and I do, I remove them. Why do I remove them? Because they get gunky and they're not level. They're not level. So what I do is I rest my canvas on um, real sturdy little paper cups. These are called hot cold cups. I get these at um, Webster website. Any questions, reach out and I'll tell you how to get a hold of this stuff. But they're very sturdy cups. They're not like your Dixie cups. These can have leftover paint in them for a couple of weeks and they don't disintegrate. <laughs> um, they're really nice. And I store my paint in them. I take um, like a three ounce cup that um, has my leftover paint in it and I put a four ounce cup on top of it and kind of smush it down. It keeps it nice and airtight. So I um, take my push pins out and I rest my um, canvas on these cups so it's nice and level. Another thing I do is I make sure that I push the cups. I do not have them out there because then it catches your drips. You're not able to clean your varnish drips off. So I put them right underneath the canvas so that when the resin rolls down the side of the canvas, it doesn't get caught in those cups. There you go. Nice and level. Thin, cheap varnishing brush, a synthetic brush. They're the best brushes to use, guys. Now, I've already cleaned this off with a baby wipe. I wipe it down to remove any um, oil from my hands, any uh, dust and debris. This is our gloss varnish. I first start by putting just a bead of it along the edges because the edges are the most difficult part. That's the part that you either miss or the um, varnish gets pulled down and off the sides. And then I just kind of gingerly squirt a little bit here and there. Now, I shake my varnish lightly, about 30 minutes before I'm ready to use it. Um, if you shake it up and then apply it, you'll generally have a good amount of air bubbles. First thing I do is I grab the edge 
and I pull it over the side. I do all four sides first. I apply very, very little pressure. It's like I just glide across the varnish. Sides are done, and then I start at the top. Now, the um, orientation of this painting goes in a lot of different directions. If I was varnishing one of my landscape swipes, I try to varnish in the direction that the paint is going in. Now, I do not go over the edge, not until my final pass. So I put it right on the edge of the edge, slightly glide, but I do not push the varnish over the edge. The reason why I might need it <laughs> so I can go back and get it. I over, overlap my brush strokes and I try to stay as straight as possible. Guys, no pressure. See, my thumb is just resting on the top of the paintbrush handle. It's like I'm floating across that varnish. I'm not applying any pressure whatsoever. Overlap your strokes. And don't go over the edge just yet. Look how it just brings out those colors. You gotta protect your paintings, guys. You gotta varnish. It protects them from UV light and dust. Okay, now I've got good coverage. So the little puddles of paint, or excuse me, of varnish that are over here, I can now exit them off the canvas. Now, real important because um, I generally only do two passes with my brush. I start over this edge and apply a little pressure. And what's that doing? That is removing any of the excess varnish that is on my brush. I go sl very slowly across. and take it over that side. Now's the point where you do not pass over your painting because there are drips on this paintbrush. So you go around, overlap, go over the side, pass around, overlap, over the side. And I tend to hold my breath. <laughs> now on the final pass, I hang my brush halfway over the painting so it takes care of this lower side. Okay, now I have to give attention to my sides. There is a good amount of varnish on this brush right here. Most of the varnish was rolled off on this side. When we passed over that side, a lot of varnish rolled off of this side when you applied pressure to scrape that varnish off on your final pass. So this side and this side needs a little bit more attention because the varnish did not roll off. So I take all that nice yummy varnish that's on my paintbrush, and I'll do this side, flip my brush over, and do this side. And then I take my brush and I run it under the edge to catch any of those drippings. Right underneath the edge, another reason why you want your uh, support cups below tucked in. And then we address the sides that have the most varnish 
that rolled off of the canvas. Run the paintbrush underneath. I hit it again. And then this side. Run the paintbrush underneath to catch your drifts. And then I immediately take my brush and I rinse it out. So I'll be right back. Okay, that was easy breezy. Torch. And I torch a couple of times. Now, I, let me get my flashlight, guys. I take my flashlight and I pass it along the canvas and I look for any debris, any little dust bunnies, or any air bubbles. Then I also take my little skewer and I run it underneath the canvas to wipe off any drips from the varnish. I'm not used to talking this much, guys. And the reason I don't talk all the way through my videos is because I tend to hold my breath. <laughs> like when I'm swiping, I hold my breath until I'm done. There we go. I'm going to hit it one more time with the torch. And then I put a netting over it. Now, this is also important. Um, this is called picnicking, and I'll show it to you in a second. It's available at Amazon, different sizes, but when I open it up, I open it up away from my varnished painting because sometimes these are placed on the ground. You pick them up, there might be a little dust bunny hanging off of it. So I give it a little shake and I come in and I cover this baby up. I give it a little tap and I wish it the best of luck and a good night's sleep. And then I don't touch it until tomorrow. That's the first thing I do in the morning, guys. I come in here with coffee in my right hand and I walk in and I uncover my uh, varnish pieces and that makes me smile, starts my day off well. So there you have it, guys. Um, I hope I've answered any and all questions you might have. If I miss something or if you have any input, please leave me a uh, comment in the description box below, or once again, you're welcome to email me, guys. Thanks, as always, for joining me. Um, I'm happy when you do, guys. Have a wonderful evening or day to come. See you next time.